This happened a few years ago, back when I was crashing at my buddy Steve's place in a small town. I was in between jobs and honestly, kind of down on my luck. Steve and I go way back, high school days, and when he heard I was struggling, he offered me a place to stay until I got back on my feet. Steve lived in this old, creaky house just on the outskirts of town. The house was huge, like one of those old Victorian-style places, and it was right near this small, run-down graveyard that most people in town didn't really talk about. I remember it was late fall when this all went down. The days were getting shorter, and the weather was turning colder. Steve's place was drafty as hell, and he was always complaining about how the heating was messed up. I'd been staying there for about a month, sleeping on this lumpy old couch in the living room. Steve worked nights as a security guard at the local mill, so I usually had the place to myself during the evenings. It was storming like crazy outside. The wind was howling, and rain was coming down in sheets, rattling the windows and making the house feel even creepier than usual. I was sitting on the couch, half watching some rerun on TV, when I suddenly realized I hadn't seen Steve's cat. Muffin for a while. Now Muffin was this fat, lazy tabby that usually didn't stray far from her food bowl, so it was weird that she hadn't been around all night. I decided to get up and look for her. The house was dark, and the only light was coming from the TV, casting these weird shadows on the walls. I wandered into the kitchen first, calling out for Muffin, but she wasn't there. I checked the bathroom, the dining room, nothing. I figured she might have found a cozy spot to hide from the storm, so I wasn't too worried at first. Then, as I was heading back to the living room, I heard this strange noise coming from upstairs. It was like a low, almost groaning sound, but kind of muffled, like someone was trying not to be heard. My first thought was that maybe Steve had come home early and was messing around, or that Muffin had somehow gotten stuck in one of the rooms upstairs. The noise made me uneasy, but I tried to brush it off. Now I should mention that Steve's house had this old, narrow staircase that led up to the second floor. The stairs creaked with every step, and the railing was wobbly as hell. I'd only been upstairs a couple of times, mostly to help Steve move some old furniture when I first moved in, so I wasn't exactly familiar with the layout up there. Anyway, I started to make my way up the stairs, and that's when things started to get really weird. As I got closer to the top, the air started to feel colder like there was this icy chill that didn't make any sense since the house was already freezing. The noise I heard earlier had stopped, and all I could hear was the sound of my own breathing, which had gotten heavier without me realizing it. I reached the top of the stairs and looked down the hallway. There were three doors up there, one on the left, one on the right, and one at the end of the hall. The door on the left was slightly ajar, and I could see a faint light coming from inside. I figured that must have been where the noise was coming from, so I slowly made my way towards it. When I got to the door, I pushed it open just a bit more to peek inside. The room was empty, just a bunch of old boxes and junk Steve had stored up there. The light was coming from a small lamp in the corner, which was weird because I didn't remember seeing it on before. I was about to turn around and head back downstairs when something caught my eye. Through the window, I could see the graveyard next to the house, and in the dim light from the storm, I noticed something moving. At first, I thought it was just a trick of the light, but then I saw it again. A figure walking slowly through the gravestones. My heart started pounding, and I leaned in closer to the window to get a better look. What I saw next still gives me chills to this day. It was a woman, or at least it looked like a woman, but something was horribly wrong. She was wearing a long, dark dress, but her head was missing, like completely gone. Her arms were twisted at odd angles, and she was walking in this slow, jerky way, almost like she was struggling to move. She just kept pacing back and forth between the graves, like she was looking for something or someone. I must have stared at her for what felt like an eternity, my mind racing, trying to make sense of what I was seeing. Then, out of nowhere, she just vanished, like she was never there. I don't know how long I stood there, frozen in place, but eventually I forced myself to step back from the window. I ran downstairs as fast as I could, nearly tripping over my own feet. My heart, I thought it might burst out of my chest, 
I grabbed my phone and called Steve, my hands shaking. When he answered, I could barely get the words out, telling him what I'd just seen. He was quiet for a moment. Then he just said, Man, you probably just imagined it. The storm, the dark, it's easy to see things that aren't really there. Just forget about it, okay? I wanted to argue, but I didn't. Maybe he was right, maybe my mind was playing tricks on me. But deep down, I knew what I saw. I didn't sleep at all that night, and when Steve got home in the morning, I could tell he didn't want to talk about it. He just told me to let it go. But I can't. I've tried to push it out of my mind, to convince myself it was just the storm, the shadows, maybe even my imagination. But every time I think about that night, I can still see her, pacing back and forth, like she's still out there looking for something or someone. I've always been pretty laid back, the kind of guy who enjoys a quiet life. My name's Robert, but everyone just calls me Rob. I grew up in the small town of Georgia. It's not a big place, one of those towns where everyone knows everyone else. I work as a manager at a local hardware store, nothing fancy, but it pays the bills and keeps me busy. I'm close with my family, particularly my sister Jessica and her son Ethan. Ethan's only eight, and I try to spend as much time with him as I can. He's a great kid, loves superheroes, video games, and playing in the backyard. This story takes place at my sister's house. She lives in a quiet neighborhood, one of those places where kids can still ride their bikes up and down the street without much worry. It's a cozy little house with a big backyard, and Ethan's got this small wooden playhouse that my brother-in-law built for him a couple of years ago. It's nothing elaborate, just a simple structure with a door, a couple of small windows, and enough space inside for a kid to play. Ethan loved that playhouse. He'd spend hours in there, pretending to be everything from a superhero headquarters to a pirate ship. One night, there was a pretty bad storm rolling through Athens. It wasn't unusual. Southern storms can get pretty intense, especially in the summer. I was over at Jessica's, helping her with some chores while Ethan was at his friend's house for a sleepover. We were sitting in the living room, catching up on some TV, when the power suddenly went out. The house went pitch black, except for the occasional flash of lightning that lit up the room for a split second. We didn't think much of it at first. Power outages aren't exactly rare during storms around here. Jessica grabbed a couple of flashlights, and we figured we'd just wait it out. But then I noticed something weird. Every time the lightning flashed, I could see the backyard through the living room window. And every time, something caught my eye. At first, I thought it was just a shadow, or maybe a trick of the light. But as the lightning kept flashing, I saw it clearer each time. There was someone standing in Ethan's playhouse. I froze. I'm not usually a paranoid guy, but this wasn't just some shadow. There was definitely someone there. I nudged Jessica and pointed out the window, and she saw it too. We were both freaked out, but I felt like I had to do something. I told Jessica to stay inside and call the cops while I went to check it out. I grabbed a flashlight and a kitchen knife. Yeah, I know, not the best idea, but I wasn't thinking clearly. As I stepped outside, the rain hit me like a wall. The wind was howling, and the flashes of lightning were the only thing lighting up the yard. I moved slowly towards the playhouse, my heart pounding in my chest. I kept hoping that maybe it was just some neighbor's kid messing around, or even just my imagination. But when I got closer, I could see him more clearly. He was a tall guy, hunched over inside the playhouse, his back to the door. His clothes were soaked, clinging to him, and his skin looked off, like it was too pale, almost grayish. And his teeth, I'll never forget those teeth, they were crooked, with a few of them missing. His mouth was twisted into this horrible grimace. I must have made a noise because he suddenly turned around and stared right at me. His eyes were wide and wild, like he was startled. For a split second, we just stared at each other. Then, before I could react, he lunged at me, slashing at my arm with something sharp. I stumbled back, feeling a sharp pain as the knife sliced through my shirt. I swung the flashlight at him, more out of instinct than anything and it must have startled him because he turned and bolted into the night. I was too shocked to chase him. I just stood there, clutching my arm, watching as he disappeared into the storm. 
By the time I made it back inside, Jessica was on the phone with the cops, frantic and scared out of her mind. They showed up pretty quickly, but of course, the guy was long gone by then. They found a few footprints in the mud, but nothing else. I ended up needing a few stitches in my arm, but I was more shaken up than anything else. The cops said it was probably some homeless guy looking for shelter from the storm, but I don't know. There was something about him, something that didn't feel right. He wasn't just some vagrant. The way he looked at me, I don't know how to describe it, but it still gives me chills. Ethan stopped playing in the playhouse after that. We tore it down a few weeks later. Jessica didn't want it in the backyard anymore, and honestly, I didn't either. We never saw the guy again, but I still think about him whenever there's a storm. It's like a bad dream that I can't quite shake, even though I wish I could. To set the scene a bit, I was living in Flint at the time. Flint's not exactly known for being the safest place, but it was home. I was in my late 20s, and life was, well, pretty average. I was renting this garage that was a bit of a drive from my apartment. It wasn't in the best neighborhood, but it was cheap, and I used it as a workshop. I'm really into cars, and was working on restoring an old 68 Mustang. Nothing fancy, just something to keep me busy. So, this happened on a rainy night. I remember that because I had just started wearing my thicker hoodie again. One of those Michigan nights where the chill in the air just sinks into your bones. The rain wasn't heavy, but it was steady and you could hear it pattering on the tin roof of the garage. It was kind of soothing, actually. I had decided to work late that night. I had the garage all to myself, and I was trying to get the engine block cleaned up. It was around 1 a.m., and I was just about done for the night when I heard a noise outside. Now, this garage was in a pretty run-down area, so it wasn't uncommon to hear weird stuff. But this was different like someone was trying to be quiet but wasn't quite pulling it off. I stopped what I was doing and listened, but the noise stopped too. I figured it was just a stray cat or something, so I went back to work. Then I heard it again, this time closer, like right outside the garage door. My heart started pounding a bit. I mean, I'm not one to scare easily, but there was something off about it. I turned off the music I had playing on my phone and just stood there listening. It was dead silent, except for the rain. And then, suddenly, the handle on the garage door started to rattle, like someone was trying to open it. That's when I really started to freak out. I didn't have much in the way of protection, just a wrench and maybe a screwdriver nearby. I wasn't sure what to do, so I just stood there, frozen, listening. The handle rattled again, harder this time, like whoever was out there was getting frustrated. I thought about calling the cops, but I knew they'd take forever to get there, if they even showed up at all. Flint's police response time isn't exactly stellar, so I decided to creep over to the side door, which led out into a narrow alley behind the garage. I figured if I could just slip out quietly, maybe whoever it was wouldn't notice. As I was tiptoeing over there, I heard a loud bang on the garage door, like someone had kicked it. My heart was in my throat at this point. I grabbed the door handle and slowly turned it, trying to make as little noise as possible. The rain was still coming down and I could hear it splashing in the puddles outside. Just as I was about to slip out the door, I heard a voice from the other side of the garage door. It was a man's voice, deep and angry. I know you're in there, he yelled. I froze, not sure if I should run or try to hide. I could hear him messing with something outside, and then the most terrifying sound, he pumped a shotgun. The guy had a freaking shotgun. I didn't wait to find out what he planned to do with it. I yanked the door open and bolted out into the alley, not even bothering to close it behind me. The rain was pouring down harder now, soaking me within seconds, but I didn't care. I just ran. I didn't even know where I was going, just away from that garage. I could hear the guy behind me yelling something, but I couldn't make out the words. My feet were slipping on the wet pavement but I just kept running. I turned down another alley, praying I wouldn't run into a dead end. I must have been running for a solid five minutes, though it felt like hours. I finally slowed down when I didn't hear him behind me anymore. I was gasping for breath. I stumbled out onto a main road, and that's when I saw it, a car coming down the street. 
I waved my arms trying to flag it down and thankfully the driver pulled over. The guy who got out was probably in his 50s, just a regular dude. I must have looked like a madman, drenched and wild-eyed, but I didn't care. I just told him someone was after me and I needed help. He didn't ask questions, just told me to get in. We drove to the nearest police station and I told them what happened. But here's the thing, when they went to check out the garage, Guy was gone. The door was closed and locked, just like I'd left it, only footprints. I never went back to that garage after that. I ended up selling the Mustang project to some guy a few towns over. To this day, I can't explain what happened that night, and it still freaks me out to think about it.